Okay, now that we've fixed the front, or adjusted the width, let's square our horse up, raise the skirting, and look along the bottom edge. Again, push the neoprene to the horse, and check for the space between the bar and the horse. Using our compass, we see that in the middle, it looks good, but right here along the bottom edge of the bar, this horse is angled, he's falling off in the loin, so we'll need to use a wedge him to build a space. So we've used our compass to select the thicker of the two wedge shims that come in the shim kit. Again, we're going to use a shim that's just a little less than the space. We're going to fit it to the lower edge of the bar on both sides. Now you'll notice that there's a void here in the tree. This is in the mold, and I like to put a little piece to fill this in. Take part of your flat wedge strips and cut a piece with a little slope on it, and that fits that space right there. There's a left and a right piece that you'll cut. Sometimes it's a good idea to hold your scissors at an angle so you kind of get a bevel on that edge. It kind of helps transition from the 1 8 wedge thickness down to nothing. I trim that corner so it kind of matches the bar right there. Now then, there won't be a little place without support. This pad will transition smoothly over the stirrup leathers and on back to the bar. All saddles need these little pieces and you can take your thin, flat strips and cut two little pieces to fill right there. Now let's put the pads on. Again, when we put the pads on, we want to take our finger as a gauge, touch the front of the bar, and be sure that the edge matches the edge of the Velcro. Sometimes when you remove the pads, your wedge shims will stick to your pads, and you'll want to take them off and reposition them so that when you put the pads back on, you don't get them in the wrong place. We can see that we've filled the gap, and it's a good idea to look from the rear. Now we see that the angle of the pad pretty well matches the slope of his loins. You can also look from the rear along the top line to be sure that you don't see any bridging in the middle. It's a good idea to lift the saddle up, set it down to see that it touches here and here at about the same time. Now our bars roll up in the back so a little gap here is okay. This is because the bars are designed to roll up so they don't dig in in the back. But with some weight, everything looks good here in the back. After you've adjusted your saddle, put your saddle pad on, cinch it up, and then let's check the fit with the saddle pad. Now remember, whenever you're girthing up your saddle, don't just grab your cinch and come straight under. Move your cinch forward into the girth groove, cinch up one side, then the other, and remember, when you get on and before you go riding, check your cinch again. There's often some compression that exists with the neoprene pad and the pad itself. Things will settle in when you get on and your cinch will get loose. So give it a double check before you go riding. Now that we've cinched it up, I want to take my hand. This feels real good. I've got the clearance in the front of the shoulder here that I like. There's some pressure, but it's not tight. To determine what's too tight, if it sort of hurts when you're sitting on the horse, you can actually take your hand sitting on it, start at the bottom where there's no bar, get your hand under the neoprene, and slip it up into the bar to about just past the first joint. If it feels snug but it's not uncomfortably tight, in other words, it's not painful, that's probably okay. But if it feels really tight on your fingers, almost to the point of discomfort, you'll need to make it wider. Another thing to check for is now that we've added the saddle pad, we want to see if there's any bridging. You can put your hand through the cutout 
and feel right about where the stirrup leathers are under the top edge and see if there's a space there. Although we knew from before we added the pad that we had a good fit, oftentimes adding a pad, particularly a double fleece pad before it's compressed, will lift the saddle up enough that there'll be a bit of a gap there. And this is what I'm feeling. It's in feel some space under here. I can get my fingers in a little bit more than I want. I can feel a little bridging that's caused by this thicker pad. I've got a couple of choices. I can go to a thinner pad that I have, or I can just make the pads a little wider. I'm going to try that. I'm going to do that real quick by simply pulling the pads down a quarter inch on each side. That's going to give me a half inch more width. Now I'm getting good contact in there, and I won't have any bridging. By getting good contact in the middle, you'll help avoid pressure concentrations in the shoulder. And that's one of our primary saddle fit objectives is to avoid pressure here in the shoulder. But to do that, we've got to have support in the middle. And the only way you can really find that with your saddle pad is to reach in there and feel. You can use a rubber spatula, a cooking spatula, if you want to feel under there 